Hello, I'm Billy Saunders from Kikosing Construction. In the past, we've enjoyed being able to visit with different groups to discuss the various careers in the construction industry. But this year, COVID-19 had other plans. The following questions were all submitted by students, and I hope the answers help shed light on some of the different construction careers available to everyone. My name is Max Seifried. I've been in the got joined apprenticeship in 95 and I've been fortunate enough to been with Cozing, first job out. I've been uh, in the operating engineers for 25 years. I'm Sam Baradus. I'm a second year apprentice with Cocosing Construction. My name is Jacob Palmer. I'm a third year operator apprentice with Cocosing Construction. Um, Graduated in 2015, starting the apprenticeship in 2018. Um, right out of high school, worked non union a little bit, construction. Decided it wasn't worth it, got with Kikosing at the form shop. Worked there for about a year, tested in the operators union, and ever since then I've been bouncing around Columbus and operating all kinds of equipment. Uh, everything from loader, dozer, you know, skid steer, hose, everything up to telebelt now. Uh, hopefully one day get to operate in crane. Uh, I got to take my CCO test. I'm trying to get all the CCOs I can. You know, got to wait for that to happen. Hi, I'm Matt, and been with Kikosing for 18 years. Went through the apprenticeship program, uh, four-year program. Got out. Let's see. I got in in 2004. So yep, graduated 2008, and been with them ever since. And what would you say the entry level salary would be? Entry level salary for a first year apprentice is around $19 an hour. Um, if you're operating, it's a little bit more, but it depends on your scale. What is your favorite piece of equipment to operate and why? My favorite piece of equipment is probably an excavator, uh, doing utility work, putting pipe in. I just love running it. It's a challenge. That's what I like to do. I'd say uh, right now, telebelt. I don't know if that's because it's the newest thing I've done, but maybe it's because I get to be on my feet, move around, and actually, uh, you know, talk to people a little more every day. But um, get to control a lot more from that. And on top of that, um, outside of that, I'd say probably a dozer. I, I love running a dozer. I love making stuff look pretty. Um, you know, just keeping stuff nice. What does your average day look like? Average day looks like alarm goes off at 425, get up, make your lunch, commute to work, coffee, get try to get to work safely, get to work, see all the guys, go to the mat meeting, get in the equipment, do your job, and then go home at the end of the day safely to your family. My average day looks like um, getting here around 6.30 in the morning. We have our mat meeting at 7 o'clock a.m. And that basically tells us what our tasks are for t the day, um, what pieces of equipment that we're using, and basically it's like a blueprint of where we're going to be for the day. And then we go and we pre-check all of our equipment that we're using get in it, start it up, check the fluids, um, go to our assigned area, carry out our tasks, and then about 4 o'clock, 4.15, we stop what we're doing, we clean tracks, make sure all of our equipment's clean for the, day, for the rest of the day, um, and head back to the meeting spot and park and have an end of the day map meeting. Uh, the average day is basically just uh, getting up in the morning, coming, driving to work, uh, different regions of uh, Ohio, wherever it may be, and coming out into the job. And the good thing about it is you never know what you're going to be doing, where you're going to be going. It's always an adventure. What's the hardest part of your job? The hardest part is actually kind of visualizing what the foreman wants us to do. Um, if you're not familiar with the terminology or if you miss the day before and you are kind of lost on what is happening because it kind of changes every day, 
Um, it can be a little bit tricky, but um, once you get the hang of it, it's not so bad. The hardest part, I believe, is being able to coordinate with other crafts and other people because you run into a lot of situations where you get with different contractors and even it could be the same contractor but everybody thinks their part of the job is their main thing it's all about them but trying to get them to realize we're all in this together trying to get the job done and trying to get things organized when we all work together what do I need to do to prepare myself for an entry-level heavy equipment operator position? So if you want to go into operating or heavy, be a heavy equipment operator, um, I would definitely suggest that you find somewhere that has a great training program. Um, if you want to go into the local union, um, they always have fantastic training um, sites that you can go to and utilize and you definitely want to get your CDL because that, that that makes you more employable. I'd say do everything you can to get prepared for the apprenticeship. Um, it's not terrible but it is a lot of work. As a, a entry level just remember as your career starts a lot of kids are focusing on college and such but the trade industry needs different trades and different crafts and the good thing about it here is you're getting paid for your learning in your college or whatever you want to be for your career you're getting out here getting paid to actually learn whereas if you go to college you're going to have a, a debt when you get done and i think that's good about the trade industry pretty sure if you were to start your career again what would you do differently if I were to restart my career, I would probably pursue heavy equipment operating a lot sooner than what I did. Uh, the only thing I would do different is I believe I would start earlier. I'm kind of jealous. My son, he started when he was 19. I started when I was 30, I believe. And he's already, he's 37, so he's got 17 years in. And here I am, 57 and uh, he's going to have a better retirement than I do. <laughs> What's your favorite part about operating? Ooh, I wasn't ready for that one. Um, probably along the lines of looking back at the end of the day and seeing what you've gotten done, seeing what you've accomplished, and being able to say, hey, you know, I did all that today. You know, I got all that done, and I made it look that good. And um, being able to take care of the other trades around you as well. My favorite part about operating is getting to come to work, check the piece of equipment out, make sure everything is mechanically sound, cosmetically, getting in it, doing the job, and then at the end of the day, getting back to look over and see what you've done for the day. pieces of equipment to do things that you never thought that you would be able to do. I like working with people and working along with people out here. You uh, you have a family away from home as well and you, you draw close to them and just being around people and working with people. What was the hardest piece of equipment to learn to run? Say the hardest piece of equipment is a motor grader. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of um, levers to move, a lot of a lot of things to learn before you actually get good on them, and you got to have really good high eye hand coordination. I'd say uh, probably the dozer. Um, it wasn't too hard to learn the controls and get the feel for it. But it it just took a while to be able to become adequate at running it and being able to you know, not put washboards and everything and being able to be safe about it and make everything look pretty at the end of the day. What is the largest piece of equipment you've run? The largest piece of equipment I've run is actually what I'm in right now. It's a Komatsu HD 605 and it is a 70 ton mining truck. The largest piece of equipment I've ran is a Komatsu uh, PC 1250 excavator. Um, 
digging for mainline sewer about 30, 40 feet deep. That puts Meister uh, Telebelt, 110 foot boom on it. And it's got a 40 foot long truck when it's all sucked in and all together. And, uh, that, that's the biggest one I've ever run and it's honestly my favorite so far. I would have to say a 16,000 man of wall crane, which is capable of lifting, I believe, 440 tons. And you can get over 450 foot of boom put in it as well.